Hello and thanks for joining us on Analyst Hangout. I am Perpetua Fasomi Peter. Well, today I have three gentlemen joining me to write here with me in the studio. First, I have Ambrose Amodion, CRO, Investor Consulting. Thanks for joining us on the show thanks today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And also, I'm um, glad to have uh, Mr. Charles Farkroha, a stockbroker and business analyst. Good to have you join us today. It's always my pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, virtually, we are also joined by Aaron Akebira Jimo. He's the MD and CEO of Global View Capital Limited. Good to have you join us today. It is my pleasure. All right, well, let's start with uh, what happened during the week. Uh, the bull resurfaced on the Nigerian exchange on Thursday, halting three consecutive sessions of negative outing on improved buying sentiment and momentum as the benchmark NGX All Share Index closed higher on a low traded volume and positive market breadth. Position taken across the major sectors inched up, especially in the financial stocks, propelled by the impressive numbers emanating from the banking sector, with interim dividends and other corporate actions that triggered buying interest from income and dividend investors. This is more like a summary of what happened uh, during the <laughs> week. And of course, we saw that um, it, the trend was reversed, reversed yesterday, and today it's also maintained the positive, yeah, yeah. which is a good one. Yeah. But uh, let's, let's have your take on uh, what happened during the week. Actually, I would say that uh, the month of September, I would advise my fellow that it's a month of a uh, mistrend. What we saw in the month of August, like it will repeat itself in this month. Also, events that will shape the price are many. One, we're expecting the, the major you know, economic data, which is uh, the consumer price index for the month of August. That will determine what CBN or what is called the NPC meeting will be doing in their next meeting. They have seen the, the Q2 number already. They have seen the purchase manager for the month of August. The major data they are looking for is this uh, inflation uh, figure. When it comes by, or by next week, yeah. That was also support. Whether there will be adjustment in NPC, NPR, fine, if not. But for me, I believe that uh, for investors in the market, you know, this is the last uh, month for the third quarter of the year. Then you don't need to panic much because you know this is a trend that repeats itself in the market before now. For me, this is the time for you to position around for any season that is coming uh, in October. But the good thing that the month, uh, the week on that review of saw kind of a mistrend. Yes. And that is likely to continue the, the coming week. But investors should know that if you're in a good stocks, don't need to panic out. So you know that the, the, the engine room of making money for that company is still intact. But when you see that the company engine room for making money is not there, I would advise you to start running back to your low board. If it's still there, that's why the price is oscillating. You hold your position. But if it's still not there, say go. Some people want to know what is this engine room you're talking this about? This is the earning powers of the company because that determines whether you get dividend or not. Because you know that there's only that drive price one is our activity as human being, but nothing is the what is the earnings of the company. As traders like me that use technical analysis, I want to see the sentiment, the psychology of you and uh, my dear um, no, trader here yeah. to see how you are behaving in the market, if I will know what to do. But I will look at back to see what the company no earnings position. Is it a positive one that will support a dividend payout at the end of the year? Also, is the company on that value with what is happening? But don't forget that if you look at post uh, COVID 19 era till now, companies are things that have posted good results. That's why we are going somewhere. That's why I tell people that. There are two measures that will shape the market in 2023. One is this company corporate earnings and how successful we're able to get our election right. Once we do that, 2023 will be a good year for the Nigeria stock market if investors will take that advice and be investing gradually. I already said, of this world, do your Naira average. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I, I wanted to say that. that yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, I agree with Ambrose. Ambr you know. Yeah, people are moving. You said yes. for the first time. Yes, I agree with him 100% because okay. people have called him the technical analyst. <laughs> but I'm saying that, you know, he's also looking at the fundamentals. You know, and that's what he's talking about the fundamentals. That is the earning power, the engine of the company. Yeah. Once it is there, you are sure. Of course, he's also looking at the psychology, psychology of, of people all the traders myself all right. and other people okay there. very quickly okay. i want to ask you as we expect the um, inflation rates to be announced on thursday what are your expectations well i yeah, said it all the week is going to repeat itself yeah no it's yes. i'm even saying what do you expect the, yeah, inflation rates the to, traders to and investors are going to be very cautious we're going to have mixed trade again what we saw this week is the same thing we're going to see again. but however i keep advising plan your trade and trade your plan all right, plan your trade, trade your plan. I, yes. I think that will be a deal. We'll talk about that. Yeah, that is very, very important. <laughs> it's very, very important. Plan your trade and trade your plan. Because yeah. once you have another percent plan, you are not ready to make money in the market. Okay. Well, moving on, LLX PLC has announced the takeover of the management and operations of Adarise Farms and associated assets from the Enugu state government. 
The company plans to leverage their development, turning the entire area into a staple crop processing zone to bring about economic growth and prosperity to the whole sub-region. LLX began the year with a share price of 4 naira 25 Kobo, but has since lost 15.3% of that price valuation, ranking it 128th on the NGX in terms of year-to-date performance. Shareholders' worries are compounded by the fact that LLX has lost 16% of the stock's value from August 11 to date. Well, like I said, we have uh, right here with us Mr. Aruna. So, Mr. Aruna, I'd like you to talk to us about this particular deal. Yeah, uh, what I will first of all say is that LLX, if you check the website of the NGX, has been filing their quarterly and financial year earnings report devoid of any form of activities. You see zero turnover, zero cost of sales, and zero gross profit. That is a sign of a company that is just merely trying to exist. I, I saw an increase, but I saw an increase by interest in the stock mainly as a director's dealing, uh, which may have been as a result of uh, this uh, acquisition. Nevertheless, if this this came true as it were, we all know we have seen a uh, business combination of companies and uh, government, whether state or federal government. At the end of the day, they not see the light. Uh, if that happens, chances that we will see better numbers be rolled out of the stable of the company, and uh, that may mean well for the stakeholders of uh, LLX. Is exactly if the farm is well managed, because they were in business before until they grounded to this level that there be zero activities from January to December. Would that happen? So, if they take over the uh, these farms. I think they have to look at that critically. All right. Well, very quickly, let me have your thought. I see you were nodding mm -hmm. and saying something yeah. while he spoke. No, like uh, Mr. Arun has said, I believe that uh, it's about management uh, change now. Okay. We expect to see improvement in uh, in uh, that uh, you know, takeover from uh, LLX like to you know, bring their management uh, you know, expertise and all their knowledge in that field. Another thing that also this is not the first place they're acquiring. They've done another an acquisition in past months. I believe that they are expanding. An investor is just seeing that as activity is coming back to the company, at the end of the day, like I said earlier, when the company earnings is looking up, that was to support your price. It has been kind of a, you know, a vulnerable stop before now because no, no activities in that uh, you know, company. But now coming back, we'll see the hope for investors. Also, don't forget that the agriculture sector has, you know, have contributed majorly to our GDP. It tells you that there's an opportunity there. And also, if you want to feed the nation, you, know, you have to look inward first. If we are going to take away all this business from the government, I would that government have no business being in business. Mm -hmm. If that is so, we are seeing another you know, like taking a giant step, acquiring from the government of Anamba State, or also coming out there, we we'll see more again in the uh, press corner, Komu, expanding their, you know, their frontier in terms of uh, palm oil and planting. That means we will see a lot of uh, opportunity for those that I know, agri sector, only that investors have to be patient. Okay. But for traders like me, no, I won't go into such a talk at, at this point until I start seeing numbers and start seeing activities in there. But, yeah, but for me, for those that are thinking long term and medium term, it's a good place to start looking at. All right, thank you. Well, moving on, MTN Nigeria Communications PLC notified the public of its proposed issuance of up to 23 billion naira series three commercial paper notes under its 150 billion naira commercial paper issuance program. The issuance is part of the company's strategy to diversify its financing options with the funds deployed towards working capital and general corporate purposes. Now, one of the objectives of Analyst Hangout is really to simplify investments and activities in the various markets. And now, commercial paper is a common form of unsecured short-term debt issued by a corporation. And I, I know some persons might be wondering, why do we have that word, unsecured? <laughs> uh, exactly. So, uh, Mr. Charles, I'd like you to talk about that. Well, uh, first of all, um, it's a commercial paper. And okay. That's um, a money market instrument. instrument. It's just simply, you know, companies, usually large companies, raising funds, you know, and it is not backed by any collateral. And so the company is putting their integrity, their performance, you know, for the investors to see and say, we are a good company and come and buy this commercial paper. Usually is to fund short-term projects, uh, maybe for working capital and of course. But I'm, I'm happy with MTN for saying they want to diversify their finance option. But looking at the rates there, <laughs> the coupon rates they are going to pay, or let's say the rate they are going to pay on those um, 
they do that commercial paper less than 10 percent you know so and we're already telling investor you have to look, look for investments rate. that will at least get close to inflation rate so that uh, you don't have a negative um, return but like he says for long-term investors yes but for those who want to use the technicalities i think they should not get into that commercial paper but for those who want to do long term yes they can um because mtn has that engine according to him to continue to provide and pay dividends all right um mr arena i believe you can hear us yes i can all right i'd like to have your thoughts on this particular issue and also i'd like you to um, explain to us why it is called unsecured why is it called unsecured you know, one of the things, again, I say about MTN, if you look at the rating, if they have good rating, and uh, I think they are expected to roll out their 5G, which a number of people are looking at, especially given this uh, current state that you can port without necessarily changing your number. A number of people are going to move. And uh, when, what is what is made by unsecured? Because there is no collateral that is end out no as it were that if i default this is the collateral you are going to uh, use you are going to hold on to to recoup your money that is the unsecure uh, part of it but like i just said uh, that percentage that of return i think is not worth it as far as the when you consider the current <coughs> excuse me inflation rate uh, when, uh, when i was also asked i do explain to people that look if you put that money in stock, even the MTN stock and 200 naira at a part, that particular point of maturity, you might even make it more than when you are taking position in this. Uh, when you are taking position in this, uh, buying the MTN uh, 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 commercial paper. All right. Well, Mr. Modio, quickly. Yeah, actually, I would say that uh, you know, every company wants to expand with a cheap fund. Yes. Yeah, knowing that they're going to the bank now, the rate already is high for them. Then but what so about us, the investors? Aren't they thinking <laughs> about us too? And that's why you are seeing liquidity in the market is low because yes. you know getting a uh, fund now is you know, high, the cost is high. That's why people are now pushing banks to go to invest. You know, when it was around uh, you know eleven point five, people are still accessing banks to invest, but now at almost fourteen percent, you know, minimum you no know, key interest rate for Nigeria at forty percent, borrowing will be around the twenty two, twenty five, and that will be high for it to invest. That's why for them bank also see that going to bank or putting bank will be another you know, high cost of borrowing. Going the way I mean, as I just said earlier, this MTN, you know, you know, our brand name is wow. everywhere. And for that, we can ask you know, the public and get this phone. And they are doing it, but like you just said, for me, like we said with that, you know, in this kind of a stack inflation environment we are now, no investor is thinking of you know, investing in an instrument where you can edge against your phone. Because if you are buying to an instrument where there is no edge at all, you are the, you know, at the mercy of inflation. It's also so you are keeping cash. You are keeping cash in your bank or anywhere. You do double You want to go and buy the same thing I bought yesterday. You tell that that money that in the bank cannot afford it. For that, you need to look for where can I edge. You know, exactly. For me, that is why equity remains the option. I tell you that even bond, um, uh, treasury B, treasury B have moved to under ten percent as at Wednesday. Yeah. In the last option. So I still, you know, what's the inflation rate? Nineteen point six four. But we are expecting August going to come around twenty one. That means if you need to earn anything below 15, you are still, you know, as you are still in, in a negative return. That's why, as a divine investor, you look at which an opportunity in the market, which sector, I can see that there are any yields. Not, I'm not talking about dividend, there are any alone is about almost 30% that will support a higher payout at the end of the day. That will guide you. And also, any yields you are seeing in the market now, for example, why is it that they are, are seeing a kind of uh, you know, interest in a banking stock? These are the most consistent sectors that pay dividends. And also, their prices are low for that people are looking at the yes. banking stock. I believe that as an investor or trader, you need to balance your portfolio and not to edge it. Are this part of what I'm going to teach in the coming master class by October. By it's all this. right. <laughs> Let's move on now. <laughs> <laughs> <Send in the group>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the group managing director, the GMD and CEO, Nigerian Exchange Group PLC, Oscar Onyema, has stated that the agricultural sector can be the game changer in terms of generating the much needed foreign exchange for Nigerian economy. Onyema, whom it is known at the 26th annual Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers Conference held in Benin City, said the capital market has an irrefutable role to play in improving the agricultural sector. According to him, Nigeria's arable land area of 34 million hectares translates to many opportunities to achieve food security. Recall that crop production accounted for 91.99% of the overall nominal growth of the agricultural sector in the second quarter of 2022. 
Now, agriculture accounts for about 24% of Nigeria's GDP. But with an arable land area of 34 million hectares and several cash crops in competitive quantity, is the agricultural sector delivering enough? Mr. Arena, that's for you. I, I really do not think so, uh, because uh, year to four, there was this abandonment of uh, the agricultural sector for white collar jobs, especially among the elites, and there was this over dependence on the singular export generated products. That is the oil, which actually created the uh, apathy uh, for agriculture. But now that the world is moving away from the consumption of fossil fuel and the vandalization of pipeline and oil theft and the result of the government to face the agricultural sector, many problems and show their ugly faces. The workforce that is supposed to generate that much needed output from the sector, they are debarred from doing so as a result of banditry, kidnapping and a war review. Uh, the little that they are not able to gather, they are not able to transport it to area of need. So it's not just a matter of having the lab mass. It's a matter of can they uh, be involved in this agricultural uh, development, farming, or every other thing peacefully. In my village, people no longer go to farm. My village has been a producer of yam and every other consumable. But now, my people in my village now buy food from the market. So it's not just having the large amount of 34 million hectares. Do we have the ambience? Do we have that environment to be able to you know, turn this thing around? So I don't think that uh, agricultural have actually you know, uh, contributed what is supposed to, to the GDP. And I'm not even saying it until there is peace and stability in the country. All right. Well, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mojun, I think I'll, I'll, I'll bring this particular one to you. He said a lot of things about insecurity and how it's even affecting yield in the agricultural Simple. sector. But unfortunately, the Minister of, uh, maybe not unfortunately, the Minister of Agriculture said that the impact hasn't been so much. The impact of insecurity on the agricultural sector <laughs> hasn't been much and that they have uh, the farm rangers who are also doing well to secure the farms and all of that. I'd like to have your thought. You know, in Nigeria, you know, our leaders are fond of taking an uh, excuse for themselves. Today, surprise to tell you that, uh, you know, in one of the you know, mature economy, you know, a minister resigned quickly because they don't lost a woman that was giving birth. Today, he resigned because of that alone. In Nigeria here, we are good in giving excuse for our mistakes, our poor non-performing. I will tell you that the globalization that we have seen have come to an end with the war happening in Ukraine. That means every economy should look inward and see where you have your world for competitive advantage. Now in Nigeria, we have arable land here and there. I think this is the time our criminals should look inward and see how we can take this uh, to create jobs and at the same time to feed Nigeria and export. Because if we are producing enough and exporting, we can't be taking off uh, our, we're depending on only oil for hard currency to come to Nigeria, no coffer. Let's go to agriculture, produce and export. After feeding Nigeria, we export. After you have uh, enough uh, no reserve to do anything you want to do, but now, once oil price is down, we're shaking because that is the only source of earning our. Well, you know, when you look at uh, Nigeria, for instance, we see that the federal government is investing a whole lot in that particular sector, and uh, it's actually picking some uh, specific crops and um, also trying to save or help farmers in the, in those sectors. But my concern now is insecurity. Are we really going to? Be I'm, I'm coming. To, I'm coming to that. Okay. Very, uh, no, because well, if we are doing well in other uh, sector, for agriculture. As I said, the MPC alone is not about adjusting rate. It's gone beyond adjusting rate. It's about the fiscal angle of the policy. Fiscal authority should come in. One, if we have security all over, you know, I'll tell you, people go to the farm. I remember when I was in secondary school, I stayed in the farm till 9 o'clock, coming back home. But these days, nobody is there to stay in the farm till 6 o'clock because of insecurity. Let's put you no know, order and let you know, our, our borders be secure so that we can start going back to the farm. We we'll create employment for you that are, a lot of you are unemployed because they can't go to the farm. You can see that people from the north are even living not down here to look for any kind of job because that side is not secure. And there we have a lot of land in the northern area of the, of the, of the country to produce enough food for us. I mean, we need to address insecurity. As I said, you know what I said? As I said, earnings and liquidity. And we're getting the election right in 2023 with the time where we go. Because any leader that is coming for presidency, it's not just time to come and tell us your manifesto, but you need to you know, put your manifesto and see, can you come up with achieving your project? What a time lag or a time uh, attached to your yes. years? We need to know all this. That's why I said, 
after this election, if we get it right, Nigeria will be an, you know, a hope that foreign investors will come back to invest because then other uh, material economy will be struggling with this uh, their rate and all with all this, uh, uh, what they call Ukraine and uh, Russia. Is well down here. If we get it right, I will tell you they bring more because they know where there is peace, they go invest. They always let's push this quality in Nigeria so that we can attract foreign investors. I think all this uh, uh, our government is doing for me, they are not doing enough. All right. Well, very quickly, I'd like you to take okay. another angle because Onyema actually said that the capital market has what it takes yes. to turn the agricultural sector around. Talk to us about that. How is that going to happen? The capital market we all do is the barometer of the economy. Funds can be raised from this capital market. We saw the banking consolidation. People thought some of these banks would not be able to raise that amount of money, but we saw virtually all the banks raising so much money. We even saw a particular bank. <laughs> over subscription, raising over 100 billion, and they were looking for just maybe 80 billion. They had to apply to the regulators, you know, to accommodate those um, funds. So, my advice as um, Oscar Oyema, one time DJ of um, Nigerian Stock Exchange, has mentioned it in um, the CIS conference. Let's to, to, let me just mention, pardon me, they, were, they had a successful conference. It did, and people but that's okay, you're part of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what he's saying is. It is not just only the Haribo lands. They can come to the stock market to raise funds for their expansion. activities, for expansion. Just like Ella Lakes is quoted in the market. Presco is quoted in the market. Okomo Oil is quoted in the market. And these are companies that are already in the agricultural sector. So we want to see more of small, medium-scale businessmen in agriculture to come and assess the market for funds. The investors are waiting because, like he said, we need to feed Nigerians. And when we're able to feed and export, we have so many arrays of cash crops. True. Cocoa is there. Palm oil is there. Not only those, um, is there. Uh, not not only those cash crops, we also have fisheries. We also have forestry. You know, we also have livestock. So the agricultural sector is a huge foreign exchange earner for the country. Then we just need to get our things right. right. That insecurity. Yes. Have you thought of Nigeria can export fish? Yes. That's what LLA was expected to be doing before they had issues. And thank God they have come back now. They are even doing cassava now. They are doing them um, uh, palm oil. You know, and of course they've gone to this agreement with the um, Enugu State Government. So there is vast potential in the agricultural sector. For me, the sector has not contributed enough in terms of our GDP. <laughs> we still have a lot of potential. So, yeah. Yes, um, I'll just tell you, in my own village, well, my grandmother happen. does not need fertilizer to plant and she will give you heavy heel in a cassava <laughs> plant. Yes, because I have also gone to the farm. I've also stayed with her, you know, harvest and we we'll produce enough gari that will see us before the next planting season. Yeah. So now, that's my grandmother. Now, if able youths who are just leaving the university or leaving the high school they are giving that incentive and they go back to the farm i'm telling you yield per hectare will increase and we have a lot of food and however food. it's not just the bumper harvest we need to have structures in terms of storage facilities that's very important, very, very really. important. and that's so another that, conversation yes yeah, so that at the end of the, 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 the chain the, the, the value chain, chain there yeah. and not just to export the raw agricultural product we need to add value to, to it, it yeah. before we begin to export so that we get and maximize the revenue we are supposed to get from that product. So I agree with Oscar Uyema. Agriculture or the Nigerian capital market has that potential to fund agricultural activities in the country. All right, thank you. Well, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll turn our attention to uh, Q2 results of Tier 2 banks. Stay with us. Don't go away. We'll be right back.